hello and welcome to another video with me Esther from gather and create I have a fun stamparatus project for you today uh, if you haven't heard of uh, the stamp stamparatus before then it, you are in for a treat it is a stamp positioning tool um, came into the annual catalog for the first time this year let me just find the page uh, there's so much you can do with it that um, it's designed as a stamp positioning tool, but you know what us crafters are like. We like to get more for our money, and so we like to make our products do more than they are initially designed for. Uh, so this is it, Stamparatus, £46. In it you will get uh, two magnets, a foam pad, which is for when you're using photopolymer stamps, and two plates. That's pretty... Um, special to stamping up the, the two plates because that allows for lots of techniques just there on its own. I have done some other sort of hinge step techniques because it has hinges um, and things on there already before so have a look through my videos and you'll see some other um, techniques there on my blog and uh, today I'm going to be showing you the wreath technique some people call it the round and round technique but uh, that's how i've achieved this card that i'm going to show you today so that makes it perfectly round using the special technique i'll share with you and uh, it's just another great thing to do with your uh, stamparatus so let's get going straight away and i'll show you all you need to know this is swirly bird stamp set by the way very cute isn't it so I have a piece of Whisper White, just regular Whisper White, and I have um, some dyes that I'm going to use. Now I've used dyes on the actual image, but first of all I will show you how to make the template to do this uh, technique. So you're going to use the square framelits, and they, they're called layering square framelits so they come in a set of 19 and you're going to use the biggest of them they also come with uh, scallop squares and some fluff it seems um yeah so that's the largest of the squares there and i have used i'm going to use this grid paper that i'm actually usually stamp on i'm actually going to use it as my template uh, and it's going to look like this but I will make it from scratch for you so the first thing I want to do is um, I had the whisper white but I'm going to do that in a second cut my grid paper down to six by six inches Hopefully you can see that was my stamping area and then you need your big shot so the reason I've used good paper is that you can easily line up the squares Just put my trimmer to one side hopefully you can see so um just use it might need that plate so you're going to just lay that on there and you're going to use the the lines on the grid paper to tell you where you want your square to be and you can of course just uh, use um, a piece of cardstock say uh, thick whisper white or a window sheet for a longer lasting template and if you're doing that you're just going to need to find the center and do it that way because this kind of takes the measuring out so i've just lined that up using the grid paper and i run it through the big shot And then 
remove that bit we don't need that then we need to uh, line it up again let's go that way The squares, some of it is by eye, isn't it? So it just means you know you're going to be straight. That looks about right to me. And I'm using the magnetic platform on my big shot there it's going to be staying where I want it to so then out pops your template as easy as that now I'm going to use the same size square because obviously it needs to fit inside this template and cut out my piece of whisper white which is going to be used for the stamping to find the magnet underneath let's bring it on back sorry for the wobble okay. so now we have our piece of whisper work let's pop that to one side and we are ready now for some stamping <laughs> my frame mitts keep attaching themselves to the magnets underneath my stamparatus okay I think I may as well Use the one I've already got in here. But it's exactly the same. Just exactly the same. Just a little bit further apart. So, just so you know, I'm not using anything magic. Be different there. It's the same thing. So I'm going to put one magnet there to just keep my grid paper in place. I'm going to use my, let's use a stamp set underneath. That's like the perfect resting place for your stamparatus lid. It goes there. In goes our piece of wisp white. And then the second magnet always being careful not to put the magnets together even if they're, if they're further apart it's even more of a disaster because they will crash and snap and that is not fun so I'm just popping that on the edge there to keep the whisper white in place now I'm using swirly bird stamp set and the first I'm going to use is this little rose shape here so you put it where you want it to be and I would like it to be about there so with the the part that you're going to ink on on the card and then you use your plate just to pick that up and then you're ready for inking so I'm using Poppy Parade, which is one of the returning in colours. I don't know, uh, not in colours, uh, stamping up colours. I don't know when this was initially um, a stamping up colour. I've been with stamping up uh, six years next month. I don't actually recall it, but there was a colour shake up not long after I joined. But either way, I'm very happy to see that it has returned because it is a gorgeous red. So I've just inked it up. Mm pressing that down so there's your first one now all we do is rotate it one notch Drop it down. Okay. 
Another good thing about the Stamparatus, if it doesn't quite ink the first time, you just pop it on down again. You know it's going to be in the right place still. Even if you have to do it three times. Keep turning it round. Now the uninked stamping spots are a really good purchase along with um, the re-inkers. They're much smaller, so they're, they're really good for the smaller stamps on the Stamparatus. Not that this ink will transfer, but it will transfer onto me. See, that's what happens. You may not be as messy as me, which is m more than likely the case. Last one of those. Okay, I think I might need a little something to clean up with. It's going to use for chamois. Oh, I'm squeaking as well. Sound effects. Okay, I'll give that a proper clean when I'm finished. Just go over there. Okay, so now I'm going to use this cute little daisy shape. And I'm going to pop that again right where I want it to be. Just close my poppy red right where I want it to be, which is in the middle of those that we've just stamped. Same again, press it down. And this time it's going to be mint macaron. Your mint macaron um, stamp uh, ink pad will look like this one, new, new design, if you order one of those. Everything will go on my blog that I'm using, gatheringcreate.co.uk, and the link is in the description below. Now, I don't know about you, but mint macaron and red together make me very happy. This is all exactly the same. Isn't it nice when a cute technique is also easy to do? They're literally my favourite. You'll see that as a running theme in my tutorials. I want everyone to feel that they can make a card because they can. I don't want you to be throwing those supplies down in frustration when something just doesn't work. I want you to be able to watch it and make your own. Okay. Okay, just keep turning. Last one of those. Oops, put my magnet down. Okay, 
so that's looking pretty the next thing i'm going to do is um again all this all from swirly bird i'm going to use this little i don't know which one did i use now the bigger one yeah the bigger one um this little stalk shape is going to form my little twigs that the bird's been collecting there this little nest so again lay it exactly where you want it to be i'm going to go about there press it down And this time I'm going to be inking in Sahara sand. And the same technique again. So then that is all of my um, wreath shape made. I just now want to, oh, I've got a fingerprint there, I'm not worried about that because I'm going to die cut it out. Um, I'm going to want my little birdie in the middle there. Let's clean that up. And grab the bird. Nice little birdie. She's going to go in the middle, right there. Pick it up like you have for all the other techniques. Oops, just move that magnet, it might help. I think this is supposed to be sticking now, naughty bird. Sometimes you get that where you're. Um, plate has got a bit inky or your stamp in fact she's not wanting to play is she right here we go birdie is on now Leave my Sahara sand open because I want to put her feet on with that. With macaron. And then I'm just going to do the um, little feet straight on here. Excuse me if you can see my head. I would like to do next, let's do a little bit more stamping, but I'll close those for now. Is a uh, die cut that birdie out? Okay. I'm going to use the circle framelits for that. A stitched framelit, first of all. Sorry, it said stitched, but it's not stitched. Uh, regular circle framelit because I've got the um, the scalloped circle, so it means you don't have to get two uh, die sets to to just create the circle part. Method to the madness, and already cut the mint macaron from this one all from that one set just so the squares are one set and then the circles are one set and the next piece i'm going to bring in is a sahara sand 
and that's measuring 10 by 14 for and I'm going to do a little bit more stamping on that so I just want to kind of gauge where that is I'm using the spots on the same stamp set swirly bird again looking spots there gauging where I want that as to where I'm going to put the spot so that they poke out the circle. So one there and one there I think will be fine. And then a little bit more stamping. little hello and the hello is actually coming from uh, tabs for everything if you're a planner I think this is a great one for your planner as well um, and we do a tab punch with that so you can make little tabs for your um, for your planner but it's also great for sentiments in general so that is going to get stamped onto whisper white I'm gonna grab a scrap scrap and bring in the puppy parade again and stamp our little hello I'm gonna go about there and for this one I want to punch it out using um this label punch here. I'm going to do it slightly differently. So you cut it out normally, which gives you this shape. Then I want to take it again and I want to make a little fish tail end with it. Just like that. And uh, you can either use it as, a, as an arrow, but I'm going to poke mine kind of underneath my circle. So I'm just going to take my snips and take off a tiny bit, not too much because I want to have enough to just pop under that circle. So I am going to adhere this first. Give myself a rough idea of where I want it. I've got a bit of wiggle room left. Getting gluey. Yep, I think that's fine. So now I can put these together. So just a little bit of liquid glue to pop the circle onto the scallop circle the stamp piece onto the scallop circle and then I'm going to raise that up with dimensionals which are our foam pads like a good amount if you're mailing something you want it to be nice and sturdy you don't want things to be sinking in the middle
think that's ready to be popped down now. is not really necessary but kind of lining up the flowers a bit more then there's just one finishing touch that I want to add and there's this pretty polka dot um, ribbon now I'm not tying it all the way around I'm literally just going to tie a bow in fact I'll adhere it to my card first and that is mint map around regular card base I've already scored it, but I just like to run my bone folder along that to sharpen it. So again, just a little bit of liquid glue. Some of you may have already seen me do this on Facebook Live, but I realised um, that some of it wasn't in shot where I had the stamparatus out. Obviously, you're taking up a bit more space with that being open. Um, so I've remade it. So I had a, had a few people ask me how to do it. So I'm just doing bunny ears on the ribbon. One loop two loops cross and under it ties very nicely it is delicate not so delicate that it will fall apart in your hands, but you do have to be a bit careful when you're pulling it tighter. As I found out the other day on Facebook Live. Never work with crafters, children or animals. Okay, let's trim those off. trim just a smidgy bit more I'm going to try my luck and just pull it a bit tighter so it's a bit smaller still don't want it to overwhelm okay let's pop that down using a glue dot and I'll um, probably just trim a little bit more off Pretty. Love everything about this ribbon. Tell you what I've realised, I haven't got a spot sticking out that side. Let me rectify that immediately. It's going to ink the very edge, I think. Mm. Risky business. I'm risking it. Good enough for me. There you go. Amazing what you can do when you just wing it. Then that is as easy as it is to make a uh, wreath style card on the um, Stamparatus. As I say, everything that you need um, to make this will be on my blog. 
link in the description gatherandcreate.co.uk uh, August is a great month to order because we have bonus days are back so for every £45 you spend in my store you will get £4.50 back to spend um, next month in September so all you need is a um, email address so when they when you uh, complete your order they will email you code keep your codes very safe and um, they're super simple to use um, when you check out next month you just there's a special place on the ordering um, screen that you just pop them in and you save your money thanks so much for watching i'll see you all very soon take care bye bye